So what does it mean to follow Jesus? We've looked at <laughs> some four questions. Why we follow the people we follow then? Given a chance, will they follow us back? What does it mean to take up your cross? Follow Jesus. What does it mean to follow Jesus? Number one, Jesus' call to follow him requires surrender. We all know. And we sing this song, I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. <laughs> Let's read the book of Matthew chapter 4, 17 to 20, NIV. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once, it's very interesting, at once they left their nets and followed him. Have you ever wondered why they never questioned anything? Is very interesting. That's another topic for another day. Often we read these verses isolated from one another. We somehow picture Peter and Andrew never having heard anything about Jesus, but getting up from their boat like automatons or robotically following Jesus against their own wheels. <laughs> Granted, they may not have fully understood the depth of Jesus of the depth of who Jesus is. But they had had his call to repentance and when, and then they chose to follow him. Laying aside their nets and therefore their careers, they made a decision to surrender the path they were following as fishermen and follow the call of Christ. Listen. When we choose to follow Jesus, we too are coming in repentance, turning away from a life of sin and choosing to surrender the path we are on in order to follow the path he has for us. Because we are full of ourselves. We are self-centered. This is a fallen nature. And only God can rescue us through Jesus. And he did that. Because given to ourselves, we will destroy ourselves. That new path is the calling of every follower to become disciple makers, just as Jesus' followers were sent out to spread the good news of his salvation. We too have been called to be on mission with God. Let me tell you, the more you give yourself to others, the less you become self-centered. The more I'm focused on myself, the more I become anxious and groggy. I become agitated easily because I'm more focused on myself. I don't see the greater picture. But when I'm more focused on people, that were created in God's image and reaching out. I die to self. Paul say, I die daily. <laughs> you go and Google that and find from which scripture. It says, I die daily. So, surrender. And uh, the same Philippians that we read, chapter 3, but this time I believe in is another verse. I just want us to go through that. Uh, chapter 3, verses uh, 12. Not that I've already attained or I'm already perfect, but I press on that I may hold that for which Christ Jesus has also laid of me. We have to press on, brothers and sisters. We have to press on. We've been called to press on. Let me just put a note here so that I don't close the, the chapter. We, we have to press on. That's what we've been called. Number two, 
Jesus' call to follow him requires sacrifice. So the surrender number two is sacrifice. And Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, 26. He says, if anyone will come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses life for me will find it. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world? Yet for fate is so. Has anyone gained the whole world? <laughs> there was someone who closely could. So we have been given an extreme that if you're aspiring and looking to gain the whole world. A good example is Alexander the Great. He tried, but he couldn't conquer. He thought so, so he thought so. Solomon, my name is King Solomon. He had all, everything. Talk about women. Talk about wealth. Talk about wisdom. If you have PhD right now, I can't quantify how many PhD he had. <laughs> so many. Talk about power. Talk about peace. That guy never fought a war. <laughs> oh, yet Jesus says here, what good will be for a man if gains all? Yet for fate is soul. Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? Listen. There is a cost for following Jesus. It's easy to follow our favorite celebrities on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, all those platforms. It's easy. But following Christ requires something more of us. It's called to follow his word in obedience. Listen what Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him in John chapter 8, verses 31, 32. If you hold my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. I like that. Let's just read it in Amplified. <laughs> oh, this will make some great importance here. John chapter 8, verses 31. I hope so. Let me just see. Chapter, John chapter 8. This is amazing. All right. Yeah, verses uh, 31. This is what it says. If you abide in my word, he says, continually obeying my teaching. It's not just the one time. And living in accordance with them. <laughs> you are truly my disciple. So it's not just obeying, but living. The word becomes incarnate in you. You begin to be a walking Bible, an epistle. Paul says, we are a piece of your letters that can be read. Go and Google that one as well. Then you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth. Which truth? The truth regarding salvation. And the truth will set you free. Free from what? The penalty of sin. And that just tells me as well, in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, it says, This word of the Lord. Just this word of the Lord, let me just paraphrase it, will not depart from your mouth, but you will meditate, it, meditate it on, you will meditate on it day and night, so that you will make yourself successful and prosper. The word disciple means a fully devoted follower or learner. Jesus said a true follower of his is one who holds to his teaching, leaves them. The word of God becomes alive in us. 
When we look at the Greek word translated hold, hold on into his teaching, it means meno, M-E-N-O, meno or meno. Interesting. If I say meno, it's a Swahili word, means teeth. <laughs> oh, maybe the teeth is just holding it. Meno. <laughs> Which means to stay, to remain, to live, to dwell, to abide. It's the same Greek, the same word that he used in John chapter 15 when Jesus said we must abide in him in order to bear fruit. We are to attach ourselves. The branches are attaching themselves to the tree. If we detach ourselves, we don't. We are left to our own. Jesus made it clear that a follower is one who obeys and lives in his word. Not just someone who continues his or her same lifestyle, but now with a Christian label on it. Amazing. <laughs> well, we've looked at two things. Surrender and sacrifice. We'll go and look on other points. Twin! Looking forward to see you guys. <laughs>